next 20, 25, 20, 25 minutes uh, with you guys. I'm going to try to keep this, uh, uh, this keep like uh, short. I know that we have a 45 minutes for a presentation, but uh, I like kind of speaking less and, and listening more and, and kind of uh, getting a more, uh, more feedback from, uh, um, from the audience as well. So, so anyway, uh, what we're going to talk about today is, is going to be a, uh, the name of presentation is Workforce Transformation and Automation, but primarily what we're going to focus on is uh, a digital transformation and uh, what is happening uh, in the marketplace and uh, with our customers, our users during the digital transformation and how and what we can learn from what is happening today uh from a perspective of the of the product development really so really quick a uh, couple of career highlights uh, born and raised in belgrade uh, did my master and uh, and my graduate and undergrad in in, in belgrade serbia on uh, school of electronic engineering now working as a vice president of engineering for a, a global company working with big clients uh, over there and um, so far uh, working in different uh, as advisory in a different advisory boards uh, for Cisco Twilio and, and Presidio as well. So digital transformation. So we all build our careers and probably uh, build our names and learn what to, and that's what we are doing. It's a digital transformation. That's a part of that. Uh, that movement of digital transformation. And, and we all know that uh, digital transformation did change the way how we live, how we work, because it did touch not just the uh, corporations and companies where we are working, it did change the way how we approach to the work and, and you know, someone would say unfortunately life, but we are seeing today that um, work is so transformed that work is not a place anymore because we can work from everywhere, work is activity. So that's something that we do, that we do for our, for living. But the official uh, uh, definition of uh, digital transformation is that digital transformation is the adoption of digital technology by a company to improve business processes. And at the end of the day, deliver a value for the customers and provide and accelerate innovation. Uh, the one thing that I personally do not agree with this uh, this definition is uh, to de de uh, define a value for the customer. It's very kind of uh, it's very kind of uh, uh, limited because uh, we should look at uh, both internal and external users. So bottom line is uh, uh, digital transformation needs to improve business processes and deliver a value to our customers because that's the purpose of a business. But at the same time, it needs to deliver a value for our employees because at the end of the day, if we do not have a, uh, a happy employees, engaged employees and uh, employees that are able to and willing to work within the corporation, within our enterprise, our customers at the end of the day will not be um, happy and it will not be a... Um, uh, will not be consuming our product or our service. Um, I'm kind of like uh, looking at the history and uh, one would say that uh, digital transformation started in 1941 when the first electronic computer was uh, kind of uh, uh, built and, uh, and when people come up with it. Um, however, uh, over time, if we look all of those events or milestones on, on, on this kind of timeline, uh, the big thing that really start uh, significantly impacting uh, the way how we perceive work and uh, way how we perceive life from a digital perspective was uh, uh, adoption and proliferation of, of internet. I do remember that uh, when we got uh, 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 in Belgrade the internet access to the um, through the um, college you know it was it was very interesting it, we, we were going down the down spending some time and and trying to collaborate with our colleagues all over the world but definitely the the um really implementation of internet and adoption like wide worldwide adoption of internet it really accelerate everything that uh, uh, that we are doing now recently 
since 2007, we are seeing another disruption in the market or, or uh, in, in our, in a way that uh, um, it's a uh, cloud disruption. Basically the proliferation of the cloud that disrupted majority of the industries and enable industries to basically uh, innovate much faster. I think that someone needs to go on mute real quick. I think that Marco... Yeah, let's see. Oh, perfect. So anyway, long story short, the uh, the cloud and uh, why uh, acceptance of the cloud really uh, uh, accelerate the uh, the adoption of the digital technologies and the adoption of the application in general. So if you guys look at, um, there was a great survey done by McAfee recently. So, and the conclusion of the survey was that every company today is a software company. So the average enterprise has the 464 custom applications that are deployed to the, the today. And when you look at the different, uh, different companies that it's, it's pretty much same across the industry. So basically the companies that are not even associated with the technology, those, uh, those companies that are deploying a lots of applications and developing lots of applications. If you look, of course, the number of the internal and external application is completely gonna be based on, um, on application size with the fact that uh, the companies with a higher number of employees have a uh, adoption of the higher, uh, higher adoption of the application. Um, what is very interesting is that uh, on average, enterprises will develop and deploy 37 new applications uh, in the next 12 months. And this rapid pace of development represents that around 20% increase in the number of custom applications that are deployed at the average enterprise today. So this trend of using the application, developing applications is here to stay. And what is now, what we need to really understand that when we are working with enterprises and with the companies, we are, our product and our solutions are going to be just a part of the overall portfolio. So if we look at that application portfolio, around 50%, over 50% are internally facing. So majority of the applications that we have in an enterprise are in fact there and developed to address internal work, the work that uh, workers and employees need to perform day over day. And externally, it's only like a third of the application is externally, externally facing. So, with all those technology advancements and all those new applications, we would expect that uh, we are seeing significant increase in a productivity growth year over year. However, there was uh, multiple studies done and uh, the, uh, the statistics that I pulled for this presentation was for OEC, from OEC, and uh, what we are seeing basically that uh, we have a, in most countries, labor productivity growth has been lowered in the last decade comparing to the, to the previous decade. And the slowdown in a productivity has been a particularly marked in Finland, Greece, Korea, United Kingdom and United States. So we still have a productivity growth, but if you look at uh, the period from a uh, five-year period from 1995 to 2000 and uh, 2000 to 2005 and compare that with 2005 to 2010 and 10, 14 and 14 and 18, that productivity growth is almost half. Italy has a uh, even negative the productivity growth. So this is something that puzzled the economists all over the world. And there are multiple different uh, studies done in order to really understand why this problem exists. Uh, McKenzie uh, and company recently had a very good uh, article in which they were uh, trying to tackle a entire uh, uh, productivity slowdown and uh, really trying to compare 
the size of the IT investment and investment in the product development into the uh, and, and kind of correlate with this uh, uh, productivity slowdown. Um, this is something that is not new and it's known in an, eco um, eco in an economy as a solo paradox. And the economist Robert Solo famously said in 1987 that the computer age was everywhere except for the productivity statistics. And I would paraphrase that and, said, and say today that uh, we can see a digital transformation everywhere except in a productivity statistics. So today we have a significant innovation and acceptance of the digital technologies. However, right now we do not see that compounded effect of uh, innovation, digitalization, and all that investment that we are making on the technology in our overall productivity growth. Let's move on and look a little bit uh, uh, on the impact on the workforce. So if we look at the impact on the workforce, that uh, the situation looks a little bit uh, more eerie, to be honest with you. So Gallup did uh, a huge research worldwide, and they find out that uh, only 36% of the workforce in the United States is actively engaged in the work that they are performing. And that number is significantly lower worldwide. It's a 20%, right? So uh, out of all those uh, disengaged employees, 74% are <clears throat> uh, either look actively looking for a new work or new employment or watching for the openings. So another study showed that uh, 40% the all work was spent on mundane tasks. So what the, we are seeing in a workforce is we have a application portfolio today and our workers, non-farm workers, they are moving the data from one system of record to another system of record or using the information from those systems of record, reformatting those applications in order to perform the work. So that means that around 10 billion hours were spent daily on a manual tasks by moving one, uh, one piece of information from one system and record to another system of record. All of those mundane tasks, all of those boring tasks are significantly impacting employee engagement and, and majority of the employees that are disengaged, they're saying, oh, well, this is, not a, uh, this is not a skill. This is not the reason why I'm working here. I wanna make a difference. I wanna make an impact. And uh, this is really boring, right? And we know that engaged teams are 22% uh, more productive than disengaged teams. So, Overall, again, going back to a, uh, to a beginning of the, of the presentation, we have historically that uh, uh, boom or that huge development of, uh, uh, of a technology advances, application technologies, adoption of the cloud, adoption of the algorithms, AI and such. But at the same time, we, we are seeing a decremental effect on the, uh, on the productivity and the decremental effect on the overall health and overall employee engagement and employee productivity. So what is the te technology or industry response on, the, uh, on all of that? It is something that uh, I like to refer to as a automation layer. So basically, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you see a, uh, at least I try to kind of, um, uh, depict a traditional enterprise where you have uh, a, uh, a portfolio of on-premises and SaaS applications. And there are some of the names. There are probably more of them, but those are the some that, that, that we are seeing across the different customer base. 
besides of those traditional SaaS and traditional on-prem applications, we also have a homegrown application and some of the customers still have a significant amount of mainframe apps or mainframe systems that they are using in a daily basis. I personally uh, uh, was shocked when I really understood that there is a quite a few of my customers that are still using mainframe in a daily business. So back to original uh, story, majority of the customers or employees with those customers are moving the data or leveraging throughout their day, different system of record, different collaboration tools like Slack, like uh, WebEx, like Zoom or SAP or ServiceNow. And also they are dipping into their homegrown applications. So industry responded with a building that automation layer where automation layer in fact is moving uh, everything from a siloed point solution to become an end-to-end -end layer that sits above all an organization's application and cloud services and manage the process flow that, across them. So the point of, the, um, of that um, automation layer is really to optimize the move of data and move the information from one system of record to another system of record and bring that uh, automation into the, the workplace. So automation layer is becoming a huge business. So if uh, an automation layer today is recognized on the marketplace as a robotic process automation. So if you look just in the United States, and this is an estimate for um, uh, 2020, the, the, the size of the US RPA market is around $1.5 billion. And the estimated CAGR uh, to until 2028 is 32%. And if you also look at the, at the kind of, is this, uh, um, uh, the kind of the, um, is this like uh, uh, what part of the market is going to be a software, which will be services? Over 61% of the market segment is in fact services where consultants and uh, engineers are going and uh, understanding the workflows, understanding a process, and, and trying to really uh, uh, deliver service and optimize the, the process and workflows for clients. However, besides of the point RPA solutions that we are seeing on the market, like UiPath, like Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, Cofax, we are seeing now that big software companies are understanding that there is a problem on the space and that automation layer is something that potentially can add additional complexity, even though it is a big business it, 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 and, and lots of companies build the products around it, we are seeing that major software companies are acquiring automation firm, firms with a major focus on implement automation into their products. The first one, Microsoft did acquire Soft Automate. They build a portfolio and they include that uh, Soft Automate in the Power Apps as a Power Automate. And recently, Salesforce.com acquired service trays and make them a part of their MuleSoft uh, initiative. So what we are expecting now is that Salesforce is going to come over time with the tools and, uh, and products within their suite that are going to allow easier integration and easier workflow auto automation within their, within their product suite and, and externally. So let's start wrapping up real quick and, and start talking about what is the impact on the product, de um, product development and what we see as a, as a major impact of all those statistics and everything that is happening in the market on a product development. The first one is uh, focus on the product is not sufficient. So what that means is that uh, we as a product designers and product managers, uh, we are spending a lot of time focusing on how to increase the user productivity within the application itself. There's a lot of studies and we went through the different seminars and different uh, presentations where they taught us how to build the user interface and how to really uh, create the environment in, uh, in, in our applications that users are going to efficiently use and do the work within, their, uh, within our applications. Uh, 
This is not sufficient anymore. We cannot be a silo. We cannot look at the productivity of the user just as the productivity of the person that is using our application. We need to understand the entire workflow, entire user journey, and what other applications are going to be used by that user in order to perform work. So we need to focus on how our application will play along with other apps in the portfolio in the enterprise. We need to, uh, so again, it's not a single step thinking about productivity of our application, but it's a journey thinking how we are going to be a part, a good part of the journey and how we are going to play a part and optimize overall a uh, user journey of using the application and uh, enabling uh, our customer or our user to perform the work. Think above us. So today when you are building application, it is overall rule that, oh yeah, I need to expose my APIs and I do need to build a application that is uh, that has ability to integrate with the, with, the, with the other applications. The most cheaper and most easier way is to leverage REST, SOAP or, or whatnot. So, uh, but providing a set of uh, APIs to be consumed by a user uh, or by the company for the integration is not sufficient. Even though it is a must, it doesn't satisfy full integration. Unfortunately, today we are lacking, uh, there is a lack of development skills. There's not that many uh, companies that can afford or have a developers in-house that can build the integrations and consume the APIs that you as a product developers gave them to use. So what we need to do is uh, we need to kind of de democratize integration by leveraging no code or low code environments. And we should provide those environments as a part of our product. We need to give a tools to our clients to integrate their application portfolio around our application and build workflows around the user need. That's something that Salesforce is doing. Freshdesk recently uh, just went public and they build very, um, it's a part of the ITSM portfolio, but they build a very straightforward, easy to use environment in which uh, you can leverage their workflows, build the workflows, integrate and, and consume their uh, APIs and the APIs of other applications in order to create the end-to-end -end integration within the IT services portfolio. We need, when we are building a big product, it's not enough that we're gonna say, we are just software company, here's our product, go consume it. We need to think about providing a professional services to our clients. And when we are seeing, when we are talking about the professional services, we are talking about building a service or consulting organization or partner channel to deliver and deploy our product and basically understand how our application is going to play within the application portfolio. And then we will be the one providing that professional services of integration, optimization of the workflow and optimization of the processes. And that approach will help us create a stickiness around our product because our product at that point is going to become a sort focal point for entire enterprise and it will enable integration of other application and migration from our product or displacement of our product is going to become uh, uh, less possible or more difficult for our clients. So basically switching costs, as we call that in a business, are going to be significantly higher. And last thing, at least uh, 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 there's a lot of other things, but this is something that, that, that we are seeing as a, as a important thing. We need to empower users to customize the application. Uh, our view of the of usability might not be a view for majority of the users. We should consider building low code, no code platform that will democratize uh, our application customization we should be able to empower users 
to adjust and customize user interface, certain functions to their specific need because there are no two users alike and each one of those guy, uh, users will need a, a very specific, uh, specific uh, requirements. And if we have that ability, that gives us a, a opportunity or gives us a new value proposition to be very uh, flexible application and that we can mold our app around business process, not to mold the business process around the application. So that was all I have. I just wanna thank you for your time today and appreciate really uh, you taking the time and, and listening to my presentation. If you guys have any questions, feel free. You can email me or you can just uh, hit me on LinkedIn. I will still be on a Slack channel. So if you guys have any questions, we can open the uh, we can open a floor and um, I think we we have a uh, around ten minutes for for discussion. So I'm here if you guys have any questions or or we can we can address them now. Well, sorry, Madden. I just want to say that you have some more time because the room is created a little bit earlier and it's closing in ten thirty three minutes, but we will we can create another one for uh, additional 10 minutes more to finish if you have something more because your time is uh, you have 45 minutes yeah so definitely guys if you no we can we can have a discussion i'm i'm, I'm kind of uh, i wrap up the um i wrap up the 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 prezo so definitely if we we can we can have a discussion and talk about uh, talk about anything else so i was trying to kind of be be more brief so thank you for that yeah okay so is there any question from the public hello uh, my name is marcos tiepic and uh, I have one question for Madden, if I may. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you have mentioned uh, productivity, uh, what, how, how, and this chart, when you shown those, those, this chart about uh, uh, decreasing productivity during the time, and in some countries maybe a bit increasing, but uh, how, how, that, how is that calculated? How, I, I'm, I'm curious how they are calculating that, how they get the data. So they are, uh, so thank you for a question. So uh, there is a, so what they did in fact is uh, they took, uh, and this is very interesting because they uh, looked at uh, non-farm labor. So pretty much it is a, something that we are referred to as a white collar workers. So for, for people that are working in, um, uh, in a non-manufacturing facilities or, or farm laborer. So uh, to be honest with you, it is a, there is a big formula and you can find, I can share with you, there is a uh, World Bank did a, um, did entire uh, methodology on the calculating the worldwide productivity growth, but uh, it's a number of hours put in a work and then they were measuring uh, uh, the output of the of the specific enterprise. So now, I don't know the uh, I cannot explain the the detail methodology. It's kind of above my pay grade, to be honest with you. But definitely, I will be more than happy to share. I have that uh, that entire but, um, that entire work. Um, oh, it's, paper. it's okay. It's it, it's good enough. Thanks. Uh, just yeah. for this one question is uh, how <clears throat> how this. Uh, is this reflecting only the product organization or this is let's say worldwide all jobs etc how is this is the... all jobs so yes it's all it's all jobs so basically uh, everything including the everything that is not traditional manufacturing so every office work uh, every healthcare 
every every pretty much everything but uh, a traditional manufacturing because with the manufacturing they have a different approach of measuring productivity and leveraging the uh, the different um, different tools and different automation strategies in the manufacturing itself i think that there is a boy and wants to ask another question yeah hi so yeah i'm working in a devops world so i'm pretty familiar about automation that you're saying mm -hmm. so do you have some information what is the jobs that are well because all the companies became the it companies especially banks they moved to the fintech mm -hmm. and so on and so on what is the most automated, uh, well, let's say, computer job that is uh, uh, done? So, like, if we're going from the spreadsheets to the some uh, planning tools, what is the most uh, automated jobs that we see the connections, like through the APIs, if you connecting end to end process? So, it's very interesting. So, uh, let's say in a DevOps world, right? So. So you're a DevOps engineer and, 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 and working in a DevOps environment, uh, what we are seeing is, let's say we have over 8,000 customers worldwide. And one of the thing, one of the services that companies I work with uh, for, in fact, um, providing it's a DevOps consulting. What we are seeing is that um, only development companies, companies that have some sort of software development have a success of implementing traditional DevOps processes because, uh, but majority of our clients, they are not developing as many um, inter internal application internally. They have a, they're buying the apps, they have a different, uh, different organizations that are providing the, the applications for them. So that's where DevOps kind of uh, failing for them. But, uh, where they we where we see that kind of um, um, kind of a bridge, it's in fact automation, and uh, because DevOps is fairly focused on leveraging the DevOps tools and leveraging that exp those exposed APIs to do some uh, um, um, uh, to do some some sort of workflow optimization. On the other hand the APIs, uh, the other companies don't have or don't have ability to, to use the APIs and they need to figure it out the way of using different, uh, different tools. I just don't know if I, if I kind of answer your question because uh, uh, when you say what type of jobs, what do you exactly mean? Well, let's say if, is it a planning jobs that would be automated the mostly or the deployment jobs or- uh... Deployment jobs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it will be a deployment. So everything when you look at the uh, at a, at a traditional, I mean, I say deployment, I mean the the traditional deployment on the on the infrastructure side yeah. and uh, just deploying the uh, deploying the 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 something in a in a cloud or moving something in a cloud or deploying the applications. All of those things are already very well mature and very well. Uh, their deployment is all already automated. But where is that, um, where the jobs are now going from a deployment perspective, they're going into the planning and into the consulting, really understanding how we are going to do all of those things. And then it's a literally press of the button because that there are tools that you can use to, to do the deployment. And, and you know, uh, before it took us, let's say when we were doing on-prem or even in the early days of, of uh, cloud, when we were deploying the, 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 the things in the cloud, it took us a while, right? It took us like uh, days and hours to build that. Now it's just uh, run the script and it's there. Yeah, you should look our products <laughs> because we do exactly that thing, uh, uh, creating the release orchestration and deploying uh, by the press of the there button. You. Mm, there you go. The pro uh, I'm gonna just write your own, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, I just, I will, I will absolutely. You can just hit me on LinkedIn or hit me on, 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 uh, just send me the, the, um, uh, the website. I'll be more than happy to look. Yes.